Hi Sparkies, it's so good to see you tonight. I'm really glad that you guys are here. I'm gonna talk to you tonight about something that we all struggle with sometimes, complaining. The verse that you've been working on for tonight talks specifically about it. Philippians 2, 14 says, do all things without grumbling or disputing. Grumbling or disputing can also mean complaining or arguing. Do you ever do that? When you don't like something or when you don't wanna do something? I know that I complain and argue sometimes. So we're gonna to talk tonight about what God thinks about complaining, about what complaining shows other people about us and about how we can stop complaining. Our main verse today is a command from God in Philippians 2.14, do all things without grumbling or disputing. In another version of the Bible, Philippians 2.14 says, do everything without complaining or arguing. God tells us that we're supposed to do everything without grumbling or disputing or complaining or arguing. Now in the Bible, we see many examples of people who complained and how God was upset with them for their complaining. But the stories that I think of most of the time when I think about complaining are the stories of the Israelites. In Exodus chapters 14 through 17, we see several of these examples of the complaining Israelites. God had just rescued the Israelites from Pharaoh and they had crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. They sang songs and they praised God for the miraculous things he had done for them, but they quickly forgot about God's goodness when the hard times came. They soon ran out of food, and instead of praying to God, the one who delivered them out of the hands of Pharaoh, they complained. Listen to Exodus chapter 16, verses two and three says there too the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt they moaned there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted but now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us to death now God did miracles several times when they complained he gave them water at least three times he gave them manna every morning he made sure that their clothes never wore out, yet they still complained. And because of this complaining, God told Moses that he was going to kill them all and start over. But Moses begged God to spare their lives, and God did. So we know that God takes complaining very seriously. Do you know what our complaining words show other people? Our complaining words show that we have unthankful hearts. Luke 6 verse 45 says, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Maybe you may have heard other people say something mean, and then they said, I didn't mean it or I was just joking. But really this can't be true because what we say shows what is in our heart. So if we are complaining all the time, then we have unthankful hearts or bitter and sour hearts. When we have a thankful, tender and obedient heart, then we will speak the way that God wants us to speak. The verse we just read says that we will speak what is good. When we have a good heart, we will have sweet words but when we have an unthankful or evil heart, we will bring forth evil or bitter and sour words. So how do we have a good, not complaining heart? Well, we need to focus our hearts on God's word and on being thankful. When bad things happen, we need to look for what is good instead of complaining about what is bad. Our complaining words show that we are selfish the Israelites complained about how they didn't have food or how they didn't have water. Usually when we complain, we say the words like I and me a lot. We're so focused on ourselves. When you're tempted to complain about how bad you have it, 
See if you can help someone else or be a blessing to someone who maybe has it a little worse than you do. Philippians 2 verse 4 tells us, Don't look out only for your interests, but take an interest in others too. So how do we not have a selfish heart? We think about other people. Our words and our lives are either a good or a bad example to those who hear and see us. Would your friends or grandparents or family members want to be Christians if the Christians they know are always complaining and being grouchy? Philippians 2, 14 and 15 says, Do all things without grumbling or disputing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Right after the verse you learned this week, God tells us that we should shine like a bright light to all the people around us, so the ones who don't know God will see Him in us. So what should we do when we're tempted to complain? Think about what kind of example your complaining would be. Would it show other people that we have an amazing God who is powerful enough to save us from our sins? Or would it show them that we really just like to think about ourselves? So next time you're tempted to complain, and we will all be tempted to complain, remember to instead find something to thank God for. Look for how you could help someone else. Don't focus on yourself and your bad situation. Remember that others are watching and we want to glorify God with our words and our actions. It's a good reminder for all of us. Good night, Sparkies.